with your energy forecast for Saturday, April 13th. So the moon in Gemini will be going void, of course, at 1047 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into Cancer energy at 146 p.m. So we're definitely going to feel that shift. We're moving out of the air, intellect, headspace, energy, the curiosity, the questions, the stimulation, if you will, from that moon in Gemini. We're taking it all the way down into our heart space. We are going to lose ourselves in the fields. However, we are building towards the first quarter moon taking place in this Cancer energy. So we have some emotional refinement to do as we are finding a new place of stability. We are building a new emotional foundation for us to launch off of. And because we just went through the birthing process of this new identity, this new version of self through the eclipse portal, this particular cancer energy, although it will be intense, although it will be emotional, although it will make us hypersensitive, will also put us in a brand new position of stability within ourselves, within understanding our wants, needs, and desires, understanding where boundaries need to be created and implemented, understanding where it is that we now have to nurture ourselves back to a place of stability. So there is going to be a lot going on. Now, we have to understand that we are still very much affected by this eclipse energy. And because of that, we're still really in an unfamiliar state. And once we kind of shift into that cancer energy, we're going to have to get to know our emotional boundaries once again. Again, the new version of self, new identity, new foreign territory, new wants, needs, desires. Now we're getting to know where it is that new boundaries need to be created and implemented in order to protect ourselves. Definitely an interesting day at hand. There are 10 different aspects taking place here today, eight of them are going to involve the moon. So while the moon is still very much in this Gemini energy, we are going to see the moon sextile beautiful interaction with the sun in this Aries energy. This gives us air and fire, which means that we're percolating on inspiration, on excitement. We are building in our creative force energy. There is a new emotional awareness on what it is that we have to do in order to get a plan together. Now, the moon in Gemini, very concentrated on logic and practicality, on formulating a path, a plan, a strategy on how it is that we want to move forward. The sun shining a bright light in this Aries energy kind of showing us what we can initiate, what we want to jump into, what we want to build, what we want to bring to life. Again, this is about cultivating the new creative force energy within us, new inspiration, new excitement. The moon in Gemini then going to make a positive interaction with Pluto, the great transformer himself in this Aquarius energy. This gives us air on air action, a lot of thought. A lot of questions, a lot of just percolating on different options, different opportunities. However, this is a major boss up in our understanding and our perspective of what it is that we have to start piecing together. This is a new mood, a new attitude, pushing the boundaries of our comfort zone, pushing us into research and exploration mode. We feel more in control, more in power over our thoughts, over our emotions, and and understanding what it is now that we want to pursue. Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information communication, how it is that we express ourselves, ruler over the Gemini energy that the moon has been in. Mercury is retrograde, looking back, reflecting, revisiting some ideas, revising our plans, realigning with a new mission, a goal, a purpose. Mercury is going to be making a positive interaction with Uranus, the great awakener in Taurus energy. Uranus is the higher form of Mercury. Uranus is where we connect to the higher realms of intelligence, where uh, aha moments, epiphanies, sudden shifts, sudden ideas, sudden inspirations enter into the highest form of our intellect. Mercury is where we kind of unpack it, where we try to understand it, where we apply logic and practicality to it so that we can bring it to life. Because Mercury and Uranus are working together, there is this new understanding, this new perspective, this new idea, this new epiphany emerging. And again, a lot of it has to do with looking back. Mercury has us in a reflection state on our old ideas. 
maybe this is an element where we're finally having an epiphany on where it is that we have to breathe new life into old ideas. Maybe we're having a bigger, broader perspective and understanding on how to bring some of these ideas, these visions to goals to life. Either way, there's a lot of pressure on the headspace. There's a lot of revelation, a lot of realization. What needs to change in our physical realms in order for us to pursue new opportunities? The moon in Gemini then going to make a positive interaction with the north node in Aries energy. That north node is trying to get us on the right path to this new mission, new quest, new purpose, if you will, where our wants, our needs, our desires on an individual basis have to be center focus at this particular point in time. The moon interacting with the north node in this way shows that there has been a lot of intellectual growth. There's been a lot of aha moments. There's a li been a little bit of clarity. There has been a few answers provided to some of the questions that we were banging our head against a wall about. So we're seeing the growth. We're seeing the healing. We're seeing the repairment. We're seeing the very low, slow process of actually building towards a new mission, new goal, new dream. The moon in Gemini then gets into the boxing ring, squares off, fights it out with Neptune. Neptune, of course, in his place of power in this Pisces energy. This is not going to feel good. And this is the last aspect that we have taking place with the moon in Gemini before going void, of course, and locking into that Cancer energy. So the moon is our heart space. Neptune, of course, is our higher selves, our intuition, our dreams, our creativity. And because this is a square, Again, the moon in Gemini, very connected to the ego self, connected to the physical realm, is very much basing the possibilities, the options, the opportunities based off of what we see in our physical realms. But of course, we know that there is some major changes coming at us that we can't see in our physical realms as of yet. We have to have faith. We have to have hope and wish and dream. We have to have our intuition constantly kind of revisiting the goal, the vision, the dream that we want to be building into. That's where Neptune comes into play. But there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of vagueness, if you will. There is a lot of, I'm going to say, hidden details that are preventing us from being able to actually see past our current circumstances. So, of course, that doesn't feel so good. And this is the point in time, 1046 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, that the moon is going to go void, of course. And when the moon is void, things are very shaky. Things are very uncertain. Things are very unstable. And so, you know, it would be hard to tell whether or not it was the moon void that was creating this instability, this confusion, this uncertainty, because, of course, we still very much are in this eclipse energy and under the influence of Mercury's retrograde. However... We lock into the Cancer energy at 1.46 p.m. We sit in that. We sit in that shift, that change of heart, the change of focus. Again, coming out of the headspace, getting all consumed, all up in the heart space, all up in our feels. It isn't until approximately 5 p.m., that we are going to see some extra added action. So quite a chunk of time in the day that we are going to sit in that voidness and then sit in that heart space, trying to figure out what it is that we're actually feeling, where it is that we are building towards something new, where it is that we need to stabilize. So around 5 p.m. and again, Eastern Standard Time, we have Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desire, even our anger. In this Pisces energy, trying to wrap this cycle up, of course, Mars in this Pisces energy, trying to get emotionally, intuitively, uh, spiritually aligned with a new truth, with a new idea, with a new mission, with a new purpose. We're definitely going through the fields. We are really starting to build in this anticipation, this excitement, semi-agitation, where we want to take action. We want to make moves. And of course, we are going to be gifted with the green light go ahead towards the end of April. Go ahead, listen to the April energy forecast if you want to know why we're waiting until the end of April. But at this particular moment, Mars is going to semi-square, creating a little bit of tension and conflict with Pluto, the great transformer himself in this Aquarius energy. So we have the god of, the, of war and god of the underworld creating tension and conflict with each other. First of all, we're not feeling empowered. We're not feeling in control. And that makes us feel out of control, even more so than we were earlier. 
We are also feeling the frustration and agitation of not being able to move forward. We have ants in our pants. We are growing in our anticipation slash anxiety to actually get this new chapter started. But right now we're kind of frustrated. We're dealing with the issues that are making us feel trapped, making us feel blocked, making us feel held back. And of course, although it doesn't feel good, there is going to be an aha moment, an epiphany, if you will, on what we can change, what we can transform inside of ourselves, in our perspective, in our emotions to actually feel like we're taking our power back, like we're calming those ants in our pants, like we are calming the anticipation, the anxieties that we are currently feeling. And again, focusing on harnessing that creative force energy, building in excitement, in creativity, in imagination, in inspiration, in our inner realm. The moon in cancer energy is then going to make its very first interaction. It happens to be a positive one with Chiron, the wounded healer in this Aries energy. So we've been talking about this new version of self. We've been talking about, you know, giving birth to this new identity that we just very much did in this eclipse portal that we're still trying to recoup and recover from. The moon interacting with Chiron in this way, because it's a positive one, we're seeing ourselves from a different set of eyes. We are seeing this new version of self. We're seeing this new identity. And we're also seeing where it is that we're bossing up, where we do need to defend and protect ourselves emotionally, where we do need to stabilize within this new version of self. We're understanding what it is that we have to do to nurture and nourish ourselves back to a place of safety and security. And we're also realizing where boundaries are going to be needed. We're going to have to implement some boundaries, especially in our personal relationship dynamics so that we don't fall back into who it is that we just so fought so hard to kind of break away from, you know, the old version of self, there's still old fragmented parts that are lingering. And so the boundaries, the new boundaries in order to protect this new version of self that required us to do all the hard things that happen to be the right things to break away from the old, we need to protect that now. We're starting to realize the new parameters that we need to start operating in, especially in our emotional realm. The moon is then going to make a very tough aspect with Pluto, the great transformer himself in this Aquarius energy. So we can kind of expect, and again, this is around, let's say, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We can expect there to be a sudden shift, a sudden dip in our mood, in our energy, in our confidence, in our certainty. Now, granted, many of us haven't really reached that level of certainty, but nonetheless, uh, what we were feeling earlier, we are no longer feeling. What happens is, is now we're feeling real and raw and vulnerable. Now we're feeling exposed. Now we're feeling uncertain. Now we are, we're not realizing that we have the power and control that we actually have. Instead, because the moon in Cancer is very connected to the past, Instead, we lose ourselves for just a tad, just a second. We lose ourselves in the old version of self, in the old circumstances, in the old realm of reality. Suddenly, we are just stepping a couple of steps back in our mental plane, in our emotional realm, to a place that we, again, we just fought very hard to get away from. So again, we need to sit in the funk, sit in the darkness, really understand what triggered us, what activated us, what was pulling us back into the past. We're going to sit in that for a couple of hours. And then the moon in Cancer goes ahead, makes a positive interaction with Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, retrograde in this Aries energy, also helping us to rewrite the inner narrative narrative, the perspective, the understanding of the old version of self into this new version of self, this new identity, these new ideas. The moon and Mercury, our heart space, our head space, they're working together to try and get on the same page. This is rewiring that earlier brain fart that had us feeling disempowered, had us feeling out of control, had us feeling like we were taking steps back into the old realm, the old reality of self. This is an empowerment energy. This is us flipping the script. This is us kind of adopting a different perspective, a different understanding on who it is that we now are and who it is that we will never be again. We sit in that for the majority of the evening. The last aspect that we have going on here at the very end of the day is the moon in this cancer energy in her rulership semi-squaring Jupiter. 
Jupiter is the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings in this Taurus energy that is having us, albeit very low, very slow process in building towards making the changes and transformations in our physical realm to open up the door to new options and opportunities to us. This semi-square is a little bit of a tension point, a little bit of a conflict. We're not feeling optimistic. We're not feeling confident. We're not seeing the growth. Instead, we are still very much very much focused on the attachments to the past. Again, the moon and cancer very connected to what is old, tried, tested, and true. So we're not seeing the opportunities for growth, for healing, for repairment. We're not seeing the opportunities for change and transformation because for some reason, we're deciding to hold on dearly to the very few attachments that we continue to have with the old version of self with the past. Now, this is going to illuminate where it is that our energy is off. We are of a new vibration, a new frequency in this new identity. And the more we try to go back to what once was, the harder it's going to be to feel real, raw and authentic within ourselves. So this is definitely going to put us in a situation where we're not seeing the opportunity to grow, to heal, to repair, to actually create our own realm and reality, our own destiny, our own future. Instead, we're focused on the past where we have felt stuck, where we have been feeling restricted, where we've been banging our head against a wall, trying to make the changes that, of course, we have been making. But at this present moment, we're just not able to see.